Well, good afternoon and thanks for joining us for today's brand new Healthline. I'm Courtney Butts. Thanks for joining us. Healthline 3 is where we like to focus on ways to live a healthier, happier and pain free life. We'll be taking your calls and answering your questions live in the studio today and we'll be opening those phone lines soon. But as a reminder, make sure you're in a quiet room when you call with your TV turned all the way down so that we can hear your question. And that number to call is 318-219-4569. It will be on your screen. Today's topic is what's new in joint surgery. And joining me today to talk about this is Dr. Vic Chatrath, orthopedic surgeon with Willis Knight Orthopedics in Bossier City. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me, Courtney. Really Absolutely. enjoy being here and talking to you. Yes, yes. I always learn so much when we have conversations about joint replacement, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, so. Tell me a little bit of your background and maybe why you chose joint replacement. Absolutely. So I'm an orthopedic surgeon with uh, Willis Knighton. My practice is in Bossier. I have two satellite clinics, uh, one in Ruston and uh, one in Spring Hill as well. Mm. Uh, I serve as the director for joint replacement surgery and uh, perform a high volume of hip, knee and shoulder replacements. And uh, uh, it's, it's gone really well. We try and bring the best technology mm -hmm. and you know, I've brought it on your show as well yeah. a couple of times. Uh, we've been using uh, augmented reality, which looks like the Oculus device. Mm -hmm. uh, Very cool. So we, we do robotic surgery. So we really try and uh, bring the best technology that we can, uh, not only uh, in Louisiana, but anywhere in the world to our community here. Uh, you know, joint replacement surgery, makes a big impact on someone's life. Uh, I was just talking about this to one of my colleagues yesterday itself. Mm -hmm. uh, we had operated on a, uh, a young girl who was crippled with rheumatoid arthritis to a point where she could not even sit in a chair with and bend her knee wow. to 90 degrees. Her knee would basically remain straight like this. There was no bend in the knee at all. So we did a knee replacement, which uh, was quite a challenging operation in itself. And uh, we went to her, you know, went to visit with her on, uh, in the ward. And she was sitting in a chair with her knee bent to 90 degrees after 10 years. Oh, wow. So, uh, you know, the patient was unbelievably happy. Mm -hmm. it, I felt that, you know, I made a difference in someone's life. Exactly. Yeah. So th 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 that's the reason why you do this. Yeah, it's very gratifying. I'm it, sure. it is very gratifying. It is very gratifying. Um, I always tell younger surgeons um, that no amount of uh, money will make you get up at 2 a.m., go help somebody in the ER, and then get up at 6 a.m. again mm -hmm. and go do your day's work. Mm -hmm. So I it cannot be about what you get paid it's about the gratification and you can't put a price tag on that yeah for sure and we were talking in our midday newscast that um, hip replacement is one of those that is a life-changing procedure for many absolutely um, uh, hip replacements like we said earlier is uh, there's a journal which is famous all across the medical community called the lancet so the journal rated hip replacement as the most successful operation across all of medicine. Mm. You can compare it to uh, you know, heart operations, liver transplants, any surgery. Uh, all across hip replacements compared to the quality of life, the cost, uh, hip replacement comes out on top. Wow. And yeah. that's across a l many different operations, not just uh, joints. Not just joints, yeah. absolutely. Like, uh, you know, I can go on with different mm -hmm. examples, but this one person comes to mind. He contacted our clinic and said, I am literally sitting in a pool of my own excrements. Mm -hmm. I can't get to the bathroom. Mm. Uh, can you help us? So we were able to bring him to the clinic. We did his hip replacement. Yesterday he came to the clinic walking, no, uh, no stick, no crutch, nothing. Uh, that's awesome. Again, that's not something that you can put a value with mm -hmm. a dollar amount on. Yeah. The gratification is unbelievable. Right, and improving someone's quality of life Absolutely. is huge. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, so tell me uh, about joint replacement surgery. You know, when should someone consider it? Yeah, so joint replacement surgery is something you consider after you've exhausted all other options. Mm -hmm. So we really try to be conservative in the beginning so we'll try options like physical therapy to keep your muscles strong 
And even if you have some bit of arthritis, you can keep going for a long time uh, by keeping your muscles strong. Mm -hmm. So physical therapy plays a big part in it. We try various medications. Um, think of it like simple things like even ibuprofen, Tylenol, which are over the counter. We can give them at a prescription strength as well. On top of that, if these don't work, we can do injections in the joint. These are various kind of injections. Um, there are steroid injections and then something commonly called as gel injections. Mm. So these are other options besides using a brace to, you know, for example, in the knee, a knee brace is a very common thing you'll see people using. So when they've exhausted all these options, you're to a point where you're bone on bone. The analogy I use is, think of like it like your car. You're driving your car and there is no rubber left on the wheels. Mm. You're driving on the rims. Ooh, well, yeah. that's not going to mm. go too well, right? No. <laughs> so that's the time to put a new wheel on it, which mm. is the time to put a new joint in it or okay. a joint replacement. Very, very good analogy. Yeah. That does not sound fun driving without <laughs> the rubber on your tire. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, that sounds a little dangerous too. Yeah. I'm sure dangerous for some people that are bone on bone or at least a lot of pain. Uh, the other thing is, apart from the pain, they're at a risk of falling. Mm -hmm and breaking other things because their balance becomes so poor so think of something like you know we have a step here in the studio where you and i will get off mm -hmm. if we trip we'll be okay mm -hmm. we, our egos might be bruised but we'll be okay <laughs> uh, but somebody with arthritis may not be able to sustain that fall mm -hmm. and really land where they'll break a hip or get a spinal fracture right well, we have a caller, our first okay. caller of the day. Bob, thanks for joining us. And what is your question for Dr. Chatrath? Well, um, I have uh, been diagnosed by a, a couple of different doctors. I need a knee replacement and possibly a hip replacement later on. Um, my dilemma is they want to do the surgery. They will do the surgery. Um, I can't quit smoking. I have a problem with nicotine and have been addicted since I was a young teenager. I've been through smoking cessation program twice. I've been to other places trying to quit, and I just can't seem to quit smoking. So there's nobody on this planet that will do a knee surgery if you're a smoker. Is that a true statement? Well, yes and no. Uh, one, thank you for calling. Um, I, I, I really empathize yes, sure. with your situation. Um, the problem with smoking is it decreases the healing of the incision. Let's just say I have to do a shoulder replacement. I do have to make a cut here. Um, it doesn't well, bother us with the smoking. What bothers us is the cut will not heal and put you at a risk of getting an infection. Now, uh, in our well, clinic, we work with uh, people. I, mean, I, I understand. Yeah, I, I understand all that. I'm just trying to find where I mean, do I need to go to Germany and get my surgery? <laughs> you know, <laughs> the, where can I get this done? The, the, they're they're yeah, probably going so to be even more strict. Does. So there are options. Like I said, we work with uh, people who smoke all the time. And what we do is we try to cut down the number of cigarettes in, instead of going to zero to come to a more reasonable option and uh, then instead right. substitute yeah. with nicotine patches and things like that. So, you know, I'm very happy to discuss right. these options in detail with you. And if you want, we, we can try to figure out a way to help you with that. Okay. I mean, I need to make an appointment. Um, I've been around and around and just, I, I can cut down my smoking. I can get down to just very few cigarettes a day. The nicotine patches work. But the doctors I'm seeing now say that you have to have no nicotine in your blood system, period, to get the, well, the, the Bob, surgery. let's do this. So let's meet in <laughs> clinic, and we can discuss this in detail, and I can certainly find a way to help you out where it works okay, for okay. for both of us. Okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Let's let's do something, um, and I, I will, I guess, listen to the show to see how I get in touch with you. So you can contact my clinic. Uh, my phone number is 318-212-7841. And you, or you can just Google Willis Knight and Bozier. Okay. 212, what was the last four, please? 7841. 7841. Thank you so much. You're, You're welcome. Godsend. Have a good day. All right. Thanks, Bob, for joining us. And if you're just joining us and you have a question for Dr. Chatrath, we're talking a lot about joint replacement surgery. And we have another caller on the line. Jimmy, thanks for joining us. What's your question? 
Uh, Doctor, I am almost 96 years old, and I have artificial hips left and right. And 2000 was the right one was put in the last time, and uh, I complained, but they took x-rays, couldn't find anything wrong with it. Uh, it was put in, made by Dupree, I think that company is out of business now. But anyway, uh, I found out in about 2015 that my right uh, ball joint was walling around. And my doctor here in Atlanta, Texas, sent me to a specialist in Dallas, and he x-rayed it, and he told me it was loose. But at my age, he was afraid that the operation wouldn't be successful. And I haven't got anything done, but now I'm putting a pain patch on it and save. But when I go to the bathroom, uh, that, that right thing kind of makes a little popping noise, a waller noise. Uh, do you think it's anything you could do to help me? Jimmy, uh, how about uh, we meet in clinic and what we would do is we would start by getting some x-rays. You will need a physical examination and once uh, I examine you and look at the x-rays, we can try to find out what's going on and what can we do to help you. All right, sir. So I'm at uh, Willis Knight in Bossier, and uh, you can just call my clinic and make an appointment, and I'll be honored to see you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, doctor. God yeah. bless you. Welcome. Have a good day. All right. So uh, getting back to what you typically do mm -hmm. as far as surgery, uh, you know, the first one I usually think of is hip, and but there are other joints in our body that you might you know, need to replace maybe because of arthritis. So what are those different types of surgeries you perform? So my focus is on uh, hip, knee, and shoulder replacement surgeries. Okay. I do the large uh, joints. And uh, just like, uh, you know, you, we spoke about hip replacements. Uh, knee replacements are actually slightly more common than uh, okay. hip replacements. And uh, probably uh, because we end up injuring our knees more. Yeah. The hip um, is more of a ball and socket joint, so it tolerates a lot of trauma before we end up with a hip replacement. Right. <laughs> and then uh, third in line, uh, the least common is a shoulder replacement surgery. Again, um, when humans started walking on two legs, <laughs> uh, we don't put that amount of weight on the shoulder, our body weight, so we tolerate shoulder arthritis even longer. Mm -hmm. So my patients who have shoulder replacement surgeries, not very, it's, I mean, I would say it's not very uncommon for them to be in their 80s even. Okay. As compared to hip and knee replacements, which are more in their 50s, 60s, 70s. Gotcha. Right, because you can kind of withstand that, the arthritis in the shoulder. In the shoulder, a lot longer as compared to the hip and knee. Makes yeah. sense. Okay. And so for... Uh, the reasoning behind maybe getting well you have all the preventative measures that we right, talked right. about earlier uh, but you know arthritis is maybe one of the most common reasons would you say for a replacement a joint uh, replacement absolutely osteoarthritis is the most common reason for which we operate the other common popular one is rheumatoid arthritis okay and uh, uh, rheumatoid arthritis is part of a spectrum of diseases which are called autoimmune conditions and it's, rheumatoid is the most famous uh, one, but there's SLE, Sjogren's, um, multiple variations of it. And then sometimes um, people come because they've had a previous accident, which leads to what we call post-traumatic arthritis. Okay, gotcha. So it uh, also, you know, affects the quality of the joint, making it, like I said, bone on bone. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they end up with a joint replacement surgery. Right, okay. And, uh, you know, so you've been in practice for a couple of years now. I'm sure you've seen the, the ch or how many years have you been uh, in uh, Well, I, I was not going to uh, contradict <laughs> you. Uh, I'm, I'm coming to 13, but thank you for calling me that young. Yeah, oh, right, yes. I've been doing this 13 years now. So Nice, yeah. nice. And plus, I'm sure your residency and, and things like oh, that. Oh, yeah, too. if you yeah. include that, we go into the 20s. Oh, wow, wow. Uh, yeah. So you've got this extensive history. So you've probably seen this, the game change over the last... 15, 20 Absolutely. years. Absolutely. So when I was a resident back in the 2000s, um, we used to do knee replacements very manually. Mm -hmm. uh, as time went along, we went on to computer navigation. And uh, around 2010, 11, we moved on to computer navigation where you would use these satellite tracker-like things. 
Then for the last five years, all my knee replacements are done robotically. So we have two robotics uh, platforms available and we use them. Yeah. And the benefit of the robots is it takes the human error out of the way. Mm -hmm. Now, I get this question in clinic a lot is, uh, with robotic surgery, who's controlling the robot? We're controlling the robot. Mm -hmm. It's not like what you see in the movies that the robot's gonna go crazy. Mm -hmm. The robot is being controlled. It's my hand which is doing the surgery right. with the robot. Okay, so the robot is not independent at all, uh, at any time. Mm -hmm. And uh, what it does is, simple errors like, which can be within a millimeters or a nail's breadth, it mm. helps eliminate those human errors. Gotcha. And the more accurate I am, I tell my patients, the more accurate your outcome will be after surgery. Mm -hmm. So that's how knee replacements have changed a lot. Uh, coming to hip replacements, the old way of dip doing hip replacements was making a large cut, an eight inch cut on the side of your butt and cutting through the whole muscle in your butt. Mm. The way we do it, or I've been doing it for now, like I said, 13 years, we don't cut across the muscle, we go between the muscle. So by doing that, we're not actually causing trauma to the muscle. Right. So the incision is in the front of the hip, it's a small little incision, three to four inches, and the recovery is so fast that a bunch of these patients are going home the same day after surgery. That's awesome. Yeah, like tomorrow morning, for example, we'll do a surgery at 7.30. By the time on, I'm on to my third surgery, the first patient is getting ready to go home. That's crazy. So that's the recovery part with this. Hmm. Uh, in shoulder replacements, again, all of this used to be done manually. Now we are, we've moved on, uh, again, eight, nine years I've been doing this where we use 3D printing. If you've heard what 3D printing is, we get these custom guides made which are specific for, let's just say if you're doing your right shoulder, those guides won't even fit your left shoulder. Mm. They are that specific. Mm. So even with a the person, there are left and right guides that are made and that help me do the operation during surgery. So this process takes uh, you know, a 15, 20 day turnaround. The information is sent to Canada, Montreal. Those guides are made and then shipped uh, sterile to me mm -hmm. where I use it during the operation. Wow, cool. And so um, with, with, with the robots and the, all the advancements, it's mm -hmm. made it a lot more minimally invasive, right? So you're you know, not having to make that big, inc big incisions, I guess, in either joint replacement that you're doing. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, you know, I again give the analogy of, I, I love cars, so mm -hmm. I'll go come to a car analogy. The skin incision is the body paint, okay? okay? What we do inside is the engine. How fast your car is going to go has nothing to do with body paint. Right. <laughs> it's got to do with what engine, what horsepower you put inside. Mm -hmm. So, what the, all these advancement has done is, apart from really making the incision smaller, it's helped us do a good operation even better. Right. We've gone to the next level. Traditionally, uh, these operations, especially knee replacements, back when, uh, like I said, in the 2000s, used to have a satisfaction rate of 80%. So 20% patients, which mathematically is one in five, would say, I'm, I'm not sure why we did this, I'm not completely happy. This is when I was a student, I was learning. As we went along, I probably say that rate has dropped down to 3% from 20. Wow. Not more than 3% patients dislike their knee replacement. So 97% patients are very happy with what we're doing. That's okay? awesome. At least in my practice, what we're doing. Now 97% is a fantastic number anywhere in life. Mm -hmm. You can take the stock market. <laughs> You're right. 97%, <laughs> you're doing really good. Mm -hmm. So we keep aiming for that 100%, but we want to be realistic. 100% in anything may not be really possible. That, but we keep pushing that boundary, and we've made a big stride from 80 to 97, where these people are coming back happy. We collect data from them, uh, both before surgery and after surgery. How happy are you with your joint replacement surgery? How much are you moving? And uh, this is why, you know, at Willis Knighton, we are what we call a center of excellence. We're actually the, there are only two in all of Louisiana. There's one in New Orleans, and there's Willis Knighton Bossier, uh, which I'm fortunate to be the director of. Uh, we are certified by the Joint Commission, 
uh, to be a center of excellence. Awesome. So that's all the data collection, all the effort, the teamwork that has been put into. So we're really proud of that. That's awesome. 97% is pretty great too. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I'm proud you of that. You think that number, that percentage helps with the center of, e contributing to the center of excellence as well? Absolutely, absolutely. Because uh, what the Joint Commission does is they send an independent surveyor who has no ties with us. They come in, they look at the whole process, and uh, then if you pass all the metrics, you're awarded this title, and that title goes for the whole uh, hospital and uh, I mean essentially the joint replacement team. Right, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and so if someone is you know maybe scheduling a surgery or considering it, how long does the surgery take from start to finish? So I it's funny, I get this question a lot <laughs> and the actual surgery in my hands is at around an hour. Okay. Okay, that's the surgery time. But there is anesthesia, mm -hmm. positioning, draping, waking up the patient, uh, all that time. So to the family waiting outside, it, it will be like, oh, it's been six hours. Mm. This mm -hmm. whole episode of care. Right. Where the nurse will come start an IV, the physical therapist after surgery will make you walk. So it may look like it's six hours, but the actual surgery is an hour. Okay, wow, that's yeah. pretty quick. Yeah, so they, the, uh, it's relieving for the family to know that, no, we're not doing surgery for six hours. Yeah, okay, so tell me about the hardware that, peop that you're putting in to replace the joint. So that's an excellent question. Uh, we use titanium and cobalt and chrome. So people talk to us about metal sensitivity. Mm -hmm. uh, like, you know, people uh, who wear watches, you're wearing a yes. watch right now, it's a metal watch, right? Yes. So the metal sensitivity comes from nickel in it. So nickel is a substance or a metal which is added to the alloy to make it harder, okay? Now, what we use is titanium, cobalt, and chrome. And if somebody has allergies even to them, we have a special kind of uh, material which we have to order. And we, we do that for some patients who will tell, come and tell us, hey, I have metal sensitivity. Okay, we'll order the special equipment. The amount of nickel goes down to zero in those. Those are nickel-free mm -hmm. ones. Mm -hmm. So these are what we call biologically compatible. Plain English, it means they bond with your body and the body doesn't reject them. Well, that's cool. Yeah. yeah that's good. a good thing. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, okay. And so tell me about, I'd just love to hear about the process of uh -huh. this too. So when after you've made the, the incision and you've got the robot and everything, so then what happens as far as the hardware? What are you replacing? Exactly, so replacement is actually a misnomer. We're not actually replacing, we're kind of capping the ends. Hmm. So the end of the bone is what we shave and shape. Mm -hmm. So we'll shave down the remaining broken down pieces, then shape it so we can put a new, think of it like a pretty much a hat. Yeah. So on both ends of the joint. Mm -hmm. Sandwiched between the two metal ends is a plastic liner, which allows the joint to move in a, in a smooth manner. So that's like the rubber on the tire. Correct. <laughs> that, there you go. <laughs> okay, got it. Yeah. Okay, well, we have a, a caller on the line. Thanks for joining us. And what is your question? Ed, I think, I'm just remembering. Ed, thanks for joining us, and what's your question? Yes, I have tendonitis and bursitis in my right fist. What are my options? I've had hip replacement in the left, which is very successful. Uh, tendonitis and bursitis in the right hip, what is his options? Okay, uh, so tendonitis and bursitis, usually we try to treat non-surgically, which could uh, vary from the op uh, options that we were previously discussing, like physical therapy, trying steroid injections, trying medications. Now, occasionally, tendonitis and bursitis is a symptom, it's not the cause. So we find out that a patient has hip arthritis, which is causing tendonitis and bursitis. But again, those are things by looking at your x-ray, completing a physical exam, I can find out where it is just tendonitis or bursitis or there is an underlying cause beneath it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does All that right, answer your question, Ed? Yes, it is. Thank you very much for your information. 
Absolutely, absolutely. We'd be happy to help you. And uh, like I said, with a physical exam and x-rays and other uh, investigations, we can find out what exactly is going on. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Have a great day. So let's say um, so a 40-year-old patient mm -hmm. gets a, a, a hip replacement. How long do you expect that to last? That, that, that's a great question because, uh, like I said, my typical patient is 65, 70. Mm -hmm. So we expect the joint replacement to outlast the patient. Okay. But when we do it on a 40-year-old, a 40-year-old is going to put more demand on the hip. So we always make sure that they have maximized every other option before we're doing a joint replacement. And if we have nothing left, we have to do a joint replacement. There has to be an understanding. There'll probably be a round two in your lifetime. Mm -hmm. By okay. the time you're going to hit 65, 70, you're probably going to come back for round two. Gotcha. What, and what actually wears out in a joint replacement is usually the plastic piece. Mm -hmm. So there's metal, metal, plastic liner in the middle. That liner is the weak link, which mm -hmm. right now we expect it should last around 25 years. Okay. okay. So you do it on a 40-year-old person, possibly 65, stretch it to 70, you may be coming back for round two. Gotcha, gotcha, good to know. So I, I feel like, you know, after the surgery, should patients continue to exercise, maybe see physical therapy for a little bit? Like what would you say is that follow-up care after the surgery? Absolutely, so follow-up care starts right as soon as the surgery is done. Uh, within anywhere from 30 minutes to two hours, the physical therapist will come, they'll start working with you, they'll actually make you walk if you had a hip or a knee replacement and then either you're discharged or you're admitted to the hospital and you'll be doing physical therapy right off the bat. Nice. Uh, most of my patients who go home, we send home health to your house for the first two weeks. So it's harder, so it's not harder for them, you know, that they have to drive to physical therapy the first two weeks. Right. So we send the home health to your house. After two weeks, they actually go to outpatient physical therapy. Okay, and how long do you recommend them to do that? So typically it's six weeks to eight weeks, but that may vary. Some mm -hmm. patients will come back at four weeks and say, my therapist said, you're way ahead of the game, you're discharged. Nice. And some may be slower. Mm -hmm. So it's also age dependent and how debilitated you were prior to the surgery. Yeah. For example, if somebody has both knees that are bad and we fix one, they're going to be slower because we still have to fix the other one. Mm -hmm. So it varies case by case. The physical therapists are constantly in touch with us. They do a great job of sending over all the information directly to us. We review that information and make a decision based on that. And how important do you think that is, the physical therapy, the exercise afterward? It is paramount. Mm -hmm. I cannot uh, you know, overemphasize how important doing your follow-up care uh, your physical therapy, your regular home exercise program is. Yeah. Uh, it helps not only with avoiding the stiffness from the surgery, but also bringing you back to where you wanted to be, mm -hmm. which is the whole reason why we did the joint replacement surgery. Right, absolutely. Okay, so uh, where can people find you? You've mentioned it a couple times. Go ahead and say it again. Absolutely. So us. I'm at Willis Knight in Bossier, and uh, our phone number is 318 212 seven eight uh, four one and we are uh, Willis Knight and Bossier Orthopedics. Uh, we do have two more locations uh, one in Spring Hill and uh, one in Ruston as well. So I have a, a great team I have other partners mm -hmm. so we pride ourselves we service head to toe whether it's spine whether it's uh, feet and ankle so we uh, we have a good team. Anything to do with the bones and the joints. Absolutely, <laughs> anything to do with the bones and joints, we, uh, we'll, we'll take care of it. Okay, great, yes. And are you accepting new patients right now? Yes, absolutely. We constantly, and we pride ourselves that we'll get you in within a day or two. Nice, Yeah. So nice. even if you know we get calls from other doctors, other ERs, uh, we really pride ourselves, that's our motto, we'll get you in within a day or two. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, so if you are out there listening, give them a call and, or visit them on their website. Maybe if you want to read a little bit more about what they provide and they'll get you in. 
Absolutely, we All will. Right. Thank you very much. Well, thanks so much for joining us, Dr. Chatrath. And if you're just joining us and you missed this, you can head over to ktbs.com slash healthline3 or wherever you get your podcasts because this will be posted as a podcast at the end of this. Thanks for joining us.